By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Tilburg, the Netherlands, for the very first edition of the Edgeman Old School Magic the Gathering Championships. So it's a brand new tournament here in the Netherlands and I'm very happy about that. We have a lot of cool tournaments, but there's always space for more. At least that is my motto. And in this uh, first round match, we're going to see Mickey taking on Jasper. And the good news here is that I have matches from this event every week all the way up to the finals so if you don't want to miss a thing make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell okay thank you for doing that if you're already a subscriber thank you so much and um we have mickey who is on i believe pink weenie yes he is he's a white red a lot of aggression in his deck atox a lot of burn and he's taking on Jasper, and Jasper is on a black and white strategy, so Dead Guy Ill, but with a blue splash, so kind of Dead Guy Ill on steroids here. Now, before I dive into the deck decks of both of these decks, I've got lovely deck photos. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section, go to the matches first, check out the deck decks afterwards. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And for now, we are going to continue with the deck decks, and I'm going to start with the deck of Jasper. Let's have a look at his black and white deck. And here we see the deck of Jasper. So I've called a Dead Guy Ill on steroids. Now the steroids part refers to the inclusion of the blue power. So we see Ancestral Recall and Time Walk in this deck, and an interesting extra inclusion of copy artifact here. I find it quite interesting. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later. First, I'm gonna focus on the two main colors here, black and white. And actually black is really the main color because check out that white package. It's really the white control package as I usually refer to it. And that is the disenchant, the swords and the balance. And the thing is, it is so easy to add these cards to your list because they all just have a single white in their casting cost. So you don't even need any basic planes to play this. And we can see that too when we look at the mana base of this deck, right? We see four Scrublands, three City of Brass. Then of course, we also have the Mox Pearl and the Black Lotus. So that, that alone gives you nine sources that can give you white mana, which is more than enough if you look at the white cards included in this deck. I mean, black is obviously the most important color also because you're playing with Underworld Dreams an enchantment from Legends that's three black to cast. Now this enchantment is quite popular for the simple reason that it only works one way. You've got a lot of enchantments, like for example, Moat, that work for the entire table, but you don't have that problem with Underworld Dreams. With Underworld Dreams, it's your opponent takes a damage for every card that he or she draws. It's as simple as that. So it doesn't have any effect on your own draws. You're, you're not taking the damage. So it's just a very strong card and works together quite well, like in this kind of creature heavy strategy you could say where you want to win mainly through combat damage and the fact that you have that uh, those underworld dreams they kind of help you you know if you're kind of in a standstill because you've got a lot of control cards as well you've got a lot of you know you've got land destruction as well with sinkhole for example so if you've kind of in this standstill scenario and you still have your underworld dreams the clock is ticking away for your opponent, usually making your opponent restless. That's also an effect of underworld dreams you know if you have an underworld dreams on the board your opponent's like I'm not happy with this situation. I want to do something against it. And sometimes that leads to like hasty decisions that are bad for your opponent. So that's an, a nice side effect that I've noticed with the Underworld Dreams. Now, when we're looking at the creature base, we're kind of seeing some choices, I guess obvious choices, right? We've got Hypnotic Spectre. Of course you want to play Hypnotic Spectre. Interestingly enough, there are no Dark Rituals in this deck. I think Jasper has really chosen to go for the full set of Moxen, the Black Lotus and the Soul Ring, and has said, you know, that's enough ramp. My mana base is really good. So maybe I'm not going to play a turn one Hypnotic Spectre. I'm going to do a turn two Hypnotic Spectre. It's still going to be very good. Besides, if I do Dark Ritual into Hippie and my opponent has a Bolt or a Swords, it's, I'm two for wanting myself. And that's actually something that you see quite a lot. So Hypnotic Spectre is still a great creature because your opponent needs removal to deal with it. But maybe it's better if you take some more time to cast it and don't do it on turn one with your ritual because of the meta, right? I'm saying that here very clearly because of the meta. It's still a good traditional play, ritual into Hippie. But against certain decks, it's probably better not to. And here you see that he's made the deci decision not to include ritual at all, basically saying... So many decks are playing Bolt. So many decks are playing Swords. It, it, it doesn't pay off to go for that Ritual Hippie plan. 
So that's kind of kind of interesting, um, especially when we go and see the list of his opponent after this, you know, because you can see what he's playing, what he's up against. But first, let's let's look at some other options here that he's made. We see Suchi, of course. Remember, Suchi is quite good at the edge man we're playing according to the Swedish rules, meaning no mana burn. So the Suchi is a 4-4 for four, four, four with no drawback, making it quite good. But still, it's very vulnerable because it's a creature and it's an artifact and it has four toughness, right? So you can side blast it, you can kill it with the swords, and you can also disenchant it. So there, there are lots of ways to, to get rid of it, but still, of course, you know, a 4-4 four, for four, 4, that's really good bang for your buck. And then we also see three Sengir Vampires, kind of as the bigger creatures in this deck. We also see two Icy Manipulators here to kind of control the board. What I like about Icy as well is the combination Underworld Dreams Icy Manipulator. Usually the opponent plays with City of Brasses. So when you've got your Dreams and an Icy, you can tap down a City of Brass with the Icy. He takes the damage from that, then he draws a guard, takes the damage as well. And it's just a world of difference if your opponent only takes one damage or two damage. Like that, it just it also feels different for your opponent, you know. So it's it's really just these these nice little tricks. And then just to go back to the copy artifact that I talked about at the start, I think a copy artifact in this deck is quite good as a one-off. I'm a big fan of one-offs because it keeps your opponent guessing as well. When you just add a few one-offs in your deck. So if you played a copy artifact early, maybe your opponent's gonna think, hey, he's got a whole strategy behind it, which he doesn't. Um, and also when you have it early, you can probably copy a mana rock and you can accelerate, right? You can get your Suchi out a turn early or maybe get that uh, Hippie out a turn early. So that can be quite good. And when you have it late game, you can maybe copy your own Chaos Orb. You could copy an IC. And don't forget the opponents. I mean, we're playing Swedish old school. Most decks are full of useful artifacts that you can copy with the copy artifact. So it's, a, it's quite a good inclusion in my opinion. Then when we're uh, looking at the sideboard, there are a few cards that kind of stand out here. We see another copy artifact. We also see the inclusion of the Abyss. So I guess somewhere here, there's the idea of, you know, maybe taking out, adding the extra copy, taking out some of those creatures and then adding the Abyss, right? Because the Abyss says during your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a non-artifact creature. So if you go more that artifact route and you also plays with uh, four Mistress Factories, of course, that are also not affected by the Abyss, you know, that's another little route you can take. Another thing I like here is when he's playing against a slightly slower deck, which he is not today, so he's not going to board them in, I guess, uh, or the two Armageddons, you know, that also gives you that extra extra edge. Yeah, let's keep, let's say edge, because we're at the edge, man. It gives you the extra edge. But I think in this matchup, when I'm looking at the list, I think mainly the Terrors are going to be quite handy for him. And that's about it. When I'm thinking about the deck that list of his opponent, which is Pink Weenie. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of Mickey. And here we see the deck of Mickey Pink Weenie, and that refers to the colors white and red. And a Weenie refers to smaller creatures, and we see we see those in this deck as well. We see four Savannah Lines, and this is interesting, four Atogs. And then the bigger creatures here are the Suchis, three Suchis as well. The 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four from Antiquities, the artifact creature. And um, the interesting thing here is that we're seeing the four Atogs, because in some Pink Weenie strategies, People prefer to go for Savannah Lions with Ironclaw Orc. Um, and he's made a different decision to go for Atok. And that has a big impact on the way you build. Because if you play with Atok, you want to have food for your Atok. So if you want to have food and you already want to build a quick aggressive deck, then you're going to choose the quick and aggressive artifacts like Black Vice, like Ang of Mishra. We see those artifacts in this build as well. Bronze Tablet could be an inclusion also, which is not in here. But you gotta make space, of course, and especially considering you're playing red, means if you go aggro, you got four bolts, why not also play four chains? And whenever you see a deck photo with four bolts and four chains, I always think, oh man, this is gonna be a tough match because I like more like mid-range control decks, so it's always difficult to play against these decks um, because, you know, it's a sprint. They're sprinting against you and you're more kind of still tying your shoelaces and you could be dead before you even have your shoes on, you know? I mean, these decks are super quick and I think for Jasper, his main thing here, his main danger is he needs to try and stabilize because, I mean, this deck can go very, very quick. We also see three Armageddon's in this deck, which make absolute sense because you don't need a lot of mana here. Besides, after you've cast an Armageddon, your opponent has to play out Lance again, which works together quite well with Ankh. Also, the Vice works together quite well with the Land Denial plan. So I think the inclusion of Armageddon here is quite good. Now, we also see all the power in this deck. So he can go, well, all the power, what I mean by that is the Moxon and the Black Lotus, because we don't see any blue power in here. 
Uh, but with the Moxon and the Black Lotus, he can kind of really hurry up. For example, that Mind Twist gets a lot better. Also, your Fireball gets a lot better with all that ramp power. I think the danger with a deck like this is that you can run out of steam. You don't have a lot of draw sevens. Only the Wheel of Fortune here. That's your only card draw, basically. You don't have, uh, for example, a Mishra's, uh, sorry, um, a Howling Mind. That's a card I'm looking for. So you don't have a Howling Mind, for example. Maybe that would be an interesting inclusion in the deck. I mean, I realize Howling Mind doesn't really fit the bill in, in, in the sense that it doesn't hurt the opponent, but it could be good to kind of restock. I think that's the main danger for Mickey here that he can run out of frets, his opponent can stabilize and then take over the game, right? That is the main thing. So it, it's really vital here that you draw into a good seven. Um, also, this deck is a lot better on the play. So I'm curious to see in game one who's going to be on the play because then those black vices tend to be a lot better and aggro decks just tend to be a lot better on the play, right? So that's going to be an interesting moment already in the match at the start of game one because then if you win game one and maybe you lose game two you get to start in game three again so i think game one is going to be very important for mickey kind of to try and win it um then when we're looking at the sideboard we actually don't see that many things he could board in he could go for blood moon i guess he could say i'm going to go blood moon because you're playing with three different colors so that might work and none of the colors are red by the way so blood moon could be a good inclusion also the swords to plowshares can help to kind of kill like as saying your vampire on the other hand he already has kind of enough weapons and if you put in the swords it's also life gain for your opponent so i'm sure mickey has thought about this in preparation so i'm curious to see after game uh, game one what he's going to board in and remember when i talked about jasper's deck and i said you know jasper is probably only going to board in the terrors i kind of got i kind of want to take that back because i think he's also going to board in the divine offerings because divine offering can get, get rid of an enchantment and at the same time sorry an artifact and at the same time, it can give life to Jasper. And I think life gain is also always a threat for a deck like this, right? Because it's a sprinting deck. It wants to deal a lot of damage really fast. And then it runs out of steam. So if you're the opponent and you can have some life gain in the form of Spirit Link, Diamond Valley, or even Divine Offering, that can kind of put a wrench in that plan of Mickey here. So I think it's going to be a very exciting match. And like I said, game one, whoever gets to start, that's already a vital moment in the match. So I'm really going to watch that carefully. Anyway, this is the deck of Mickey. We looked at the deck of his opponent, Jasper. That means one thing, and that is that we are ready for round number one of the Atchman. Here we go. Game number one here on the right. We have Mickey with pink weenie. So it's white and red. It's very aggressive. Look at him go. And I think his deck is really good on the play. So starting it with the vice passing the turn. This is a problem for Jasper already and Jasper is playing black white and blue mainly black and white so dead guy ill and then on steroids because he's included some blue power ancestral recall and time walk and a copy artifact that's kind of his blue inclusion starting here with a swamp he's not playing dark rituals by the way so we're not going to see that here he is playing all the mox in so mox sapphire and mox ruby does he have any other options I mean I believe that now he's got five cards in hand which is pretty sweet, meaning the Vice only deals one damage next turn. But if he can play something else out, that would be really nice. And he's on four cards. Going to tap two here, a black and a blue. Are we going to see a copy artifact? Oh, no, there's a Demonic Tutor. That's probably better. And then, of course, we have the old question, what will he look up? I think one of the cards that really stands a chance here is Mind Twist. Because he already has two Moxen. So next turn, have a land drop. He can play Mind Twist for three. So that could be pretty big. Because remember, those aggressive strategies like the deck of Mickey, um, one of their biggest problems is that they can run out of steam. So like a discard spell like Mind Twist can be a really big problem for them. He's only playing one draw seven, which is the Wheel of Fortune. So it's going to be tough for Mickey then to come back if he decides to go for a Mind Twist. Of course, it does depend on his hand. He could also go for Ancestral Recall or maybe Black Lotus to play out a big threat. Who knows? Anyway, uh, it's now Mickey's turn. Let's see what he does. Tapping a mana here, City of Brass. Taking a damage, going to 18. There's a Savannah Lines. And as you can see, by the way, Mickey loves uh, Altars. So his deck is full of those. They look kind of cool, I have to admit. So he's passing their turn here. I believe only one damage for Jasper, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Going to go to 16 here. Draw a card for turn. I believe I also saw... A, oh yeah, there we go. There's the Scrubland. I want to say I believe I saw a sinkhole in hand of Jasper. So if there's a sinkhole, you could consider just casting the sinkhole. 
I mean, Mickey has mana issues already. Yeah, tapping two here. Gonna go for the sinkhole. I wonder if maybe Jasper looked up the scrubland. That could be the case as well, of course. There's the attack with the lion. So Jasper dropping to 14. Oh, and look at this, Mickey passing the turn. Not finding any lands, it's very unfortunate for him. Had a strong start with the vice and the lion, but now he's stuck with no lands. There's a factory. What are we gonna see? Just a lot of mana. Could, for example, play a Sengir Vampire. Has the mana to do this now. Tapping four. There's a Suchi. So the four for Powerhouse from Antiquities. If it dies, you get four mana. And remember, we're playing without mana burn here. So it's kind of safe here to play the Suchi. If this would be an Eternal Central or Atlantic rule set, you do play with mana burn, for example. But then again, he does have the Mistress Factory as a mana sink. If you would disenchant the uh, the, su the Suchi here. And there we see a Mox Ruby by uh, Mickey. Combat. There's the attack. So I think he's he's representing at least to have a bolt or a chain here. Bolt. There we go. There's the bolt. Go. I think if you're Jasper, it's okay. You know, because Mickey is also losing a burn spell here. And he doesn't want to play burn on the creatures. He, w he wants to play burn on the face. This is not the game that Mickey wants to play. And it's also a two for one. There's a disenchant. Yeah, if you're Jasper, it's kind of easy here. Now, of course, you're going to animate swing for two. That's it. Exactly. So just be patient. Try to take care of the mana sources. All Mickey can do is just pass the turn. Going to put it back with the lance. There's another Scrubland. Gonna tap three. Oh, I want to say Hypnotic Spectre, but this is better, I think, Underworld Dreams. Although although Hypnotic Spectre would be better in this scenario, by the way. But anyway, attacking here with the Factory. So Mickey taking a damage from the Factory and also from the Dream. So he's now on 13. He needs to find lands quickly. Okay, there's a City of Brass. That's something. Tapping the Brass, gonna drop to 12. There's another Lions. Okay, at least this deck can do a lot with just one mana. And I wonder if you're Jasper, if you're just going to swing in here with the factory to trade. That's going to be an interesting moment. Let's first see if maybe he has a better option. I mean, he's got enough mana to cast like saying your vampire. That would be a really good card at this moment. He's going to tap... Ooh, six. What's he going to do for six? Oh, we can't see it. Is this a mind twist? Yeah, it's the mind twist. I think he looked up the mind twist with the demonic and was waiting for the perfect moment. Yeah, this pretty much seals the deal here in game number one. I mean, what Mickey now needs, I guess, is a land and then draw into a balance. That could kind of help him. Attacking for two. Putting Jasper on 12. So despite the fact that Mickey has had only one mana source for basically the whole game. He's still, you know, has still been able to put Jasper on 12. That's quite impressive. But it's looking really good for Jasper here after that mind twist. Gonna tap three here. Are we gonna see the Hypnotic Spectre? Untapping again. Gonna use a Ruby. There's the Hippie, so 2-2 two -two Flyer. And when it deals damage, your opponent has to discard a card at random. So this, of course, another big problem here for uh, for Mickey. Now, Mickey does have a lot of weapons against it. Like, he's playing four chains and four bolts. But, I mean, he just lost his entire hand to the Mind Twist. Which is really rough, you know. He was already behind, and that only made it worse. There we see another factory attacking here. He's not going to pump it, it seems. Does that mean that he has another play? Perhaps he's got a disenchant in hand that he wants to keep open in case there's some artifact mana. He's going to drop to eight, Mickey, uh, because of the Underworld Dreams. So this is so tough for Mickey, right? You want to empty your hand, but you don't have the mana to do so because you know, okay, this is good at least. Chain Lightning on a hippie means you're not going to lose that one card in hand, whatever the card may be. Also, it means you take two points less of damage. I think, yeah, exactly. You want to you wanna keep the, the line of blocking duty. This is going to be an interesting moment as well. Yeah, he's just going to animate one and attack with it. Can pump it if Mickey chooses to block. And if not, he's also going to pump it probably. Yeah, he is going to block. There's the pump. 
So, I mean, it, basically, this is giving Mickey an extra turn, you know, and you got to play towards your out, so I think this is a good decision. There's another Hypnotic Spectre, two cards in hand for Mickey, taking a damage from the Dreams. This needs to be a land, and that other card needs to be a balance. There's a white mana. Is it a balance? Is it a balance? Is it a balance? That's an ATOC. For mo because he, the way he, he put the, the planes on, I thought it's a balance, but it's not. Wishful thinking, a balance would have been brilliant at this point in the game. Anyway, animating the factory. He's going to attack with the factory here. And this is interesting. I think if you're Mickey, you want to block, sack the vice. And then you kill the factory. And I think Jasper is now realizing that as well. Or perhaps he's like, okay, that's fine. So he's going to sack the black vice. So now the ATOC is at 3-4. So it's going to kill the factory. He is going to take two from the hippie. There's a tap, another Hypnotic Spectre. Yeah, I mean, he's so far ahead. You know, he, 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 can, he can lose that Mishra's Factory. It doesn't matter. And, oh, that's it. That's game here. Game number one going to Jasper. And it never really was that much of a game, except for that opening turn of Mickey starting really well with the Vice. But after that, it was pretty much done for here for, uh, for Mickey in game one. Both players are now going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Mickey again on the play after losing that first game. There's a Mishra's Factory and a Mock Sapphire and a turn one Ankh of Mishra. Again, a pretty good opening here for Mickey. Let's see what the follow-up's going to be. But first is Jasper's turn, of course. Remember, you now take two damage for just playing out a land. There we go. It's going to drop to 18. Can he do something here turn one? There's a Mox Jet. I think the mocks in here and the deck of Jasper are really, really good. They helped him with that vice uh, situation, and now they're helping him again with the Ankh of Mishra. There's the pass, though. So no disenchant, for example, on the Mox Sapphire or on the Ankh. Let's see what Mickey can do. Ooh, he's going to animate, and he's just going to swing. Look at him slam it down. He's going to swing in. He's like, whatever, I'm, I'm the aggro player. That's my role. That's what I'm going to do. Are we going to see a disenchant here? Or a Swords, of course. Yep, there's the Swords. So Mickey going up to 22. Play another land that's a Plateau. Are we going to see a Savannah Lions, for example? There's a Lions. Yeah, so playing quite aggressively. And I can understand this line of play. I think if you're Mickey, you probably think, okay, you know, I've got the follow-up play. I don't need two lands with this, or more than two lands with this deck anyway. So I can risk it. I can lose the factory, still do stuff. Let's see what Jasper can do. Or is he going to play out another land to put, uh, put him on 16? Going to tap two here. There's a single. I mean, those singles are quite good here. Again, kind of making it hard. There's a factory, so two more damage. Going to drop to 16. Make it hard for Mickey to do his thing, despite the fact that he doesn't need a lot of lands. There's the attack with the lion. So, I mean, that part of the plan is working for Mickey, but... Are we looking at another mana screw here? Potentially. Ooh, look at this. There's the strip mine stripping the factory. That's something that maybe Mickey could have waited with that. Just just let your opponent activate the factory. Let him do it. Then again, I mean, now Jasper has one mana less to work with. So that's also, of course, worth something. I mean, if he's on three, for example, he can play an Hypnotic Spectre. Now we can no longer do that. There's a Disenchant on the Ankh. Does that mean we're now going to see a land drop? Okay, there's the Scrub Land and a pass. And I'm really hoping here that Mickey can find a land. Going to attack here with the Lion. Going to put Jasper on 12. So, I mean, Jasper is quite low already. Almost halfway with the life. Can he find something to put pressure on? Okay, there's at least a land, a scrub land, passing the turn. There's a library of Alexandria, tapping four. Are we going to see a Suchi? Ooh, again a mind twist. Are you kidding me? Oh, look at this. He had a mind twist. Oh, man, he's just getting twisted out here. 
I, I feel for you, uh, Mickey. I feel oh, for you. God. It's it's really not nice to have these games, but yeah, that's what Mind Twist does. There's at least the Ang. That's actually not too bad. Like Jasper now on 10. Gonna tap 3. Okay, there's the Hypnotic Spectre. So now I wonder if Mickey's gonna attack if he if he wants to trade. Look at that. Jasper taking 2 more damage for a strip. Take care of the duel. Makes sense, of course. And it's not looking great here. Okay, there's the deck is taking the trade. So at least that's something here. That means that Mickey can keep that one card. There's the pass by Jasper. There's the pass by Mickey. Okay, so both players kind of top decking. And I think if you're Jasper, and rightfully so, you're very careful with playing a land, right? Because that would mean you would go to six and then you're dead to a double bolt. There's a plateau. So 16 here from Mickey, tapping two. Ooh, there's an Atok. That Atok has food on the table as well. That Atok alone can deal four damage. Five, actually, if he sacks both artifacts. Ooh, look at there. Jasper gonna go to six. Ho, ho, ho. That is risky. There's an Ancestral Recall. So, I mean, I understand you're playing the Underground Sea if you have that Ancestral Recall in hand, but it is risky. Also, now you're activating your Sylvan Library, I believe. Not sure how many cards he's got in hand. Perhaps eight. Right, dropping the ruby, then he could tap, exactly tap the library. Oh no, he's gonna do something else. Tapping four. What are we gonna see for four? Okay, there's a Suchi. But I mean, he's on six. That is huge, two cards in hand for Mickey. Can Mickey pull this off? That would be quite something. I mean, he is with his back against the wall, but he's still on 16. His deck doesn't need much. If you can just draw into a few bolts, a few chains, you can win it, make it a 1-1, one, one, and go to game number three. So Mickey in the tank here at the moment. Perhaps he's thinking about attacking with the Atok. There he goes. I like this. Man, he's been playing aggressively the entire time. He's like, whatever, man. I'm going to kill your Suchi. There's a Lion passing the turn. Now that Lion is also a lot better on this board without the Suchi. The problem, of course, is that Stefan has so many, or Jasper, sorry, has so many cards at the moment. That is the big problem here. And I wonder how close he is to the Loa activation. I thought he was already there, but I guess he's not or else he would have used it. There's another Underground Sea, no longer taking damage. Ooh, it looks like he's going to play another creature, tapping five. Are we going to see the Sengir Vampire? Sengir Vampire, 4-4 four, four flying creature from black. And oh, there's a time walk. Yeah, this is quite good. So here we really see the blue power being important in the second game with the Ancestral Recall and the time walk. Although I think that the Mind Twist and the land removal was more important here. There's the pass. So two cards in hand for Mickey and one mana, two creatures. Could consider to attack with both to put him on four. Although I think if you're Mickey like Six and four doesn't really make a big difference. You still need like two bolts. So maybe it's better to wait and see if Jasper's gonna swing in with the Sengir, which he probably isn't unless he can play out another creature, but maybe, maybe he does, who knows? You gotta wait for the right moment. A Mox would also be quite nice here for Mickey because it's, uh, it's food for the Atok. It looks like he does have a few options though. Maybe he's got another bolt. That he could use it and kill the Sengir Vampire if the Vampire decides to block on an attack. The question is, do you want to do that? I mean, Jasper's on six. Do you want to put a bolt on a creature? These are decisions that he has to make. Two cards in hand. There's another line. Okay, this this is interesting. This is because now, if he attacks next turn, he can actually put Jasper on on three. There's the attack. Okay, so I'm expecting him to cast another creature or else I'm sure he wouldn't have attacked. He's going to tap for you. Yeah, there's the Suchi. But I mean, still, he can he can put him on two. And if he has a bolt or a chain, he can kill it. He can finish it here, but it's a pretty big if, I guess. There he goes into the red zone. Into the red zone. Suchi killing the line, taking three here for Jasper, dropping to three. That is a dangerous number to be on against these decks. Uh-oh, there's the dice on three life points. 
End of the road. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing with these decks, and I I know it. You know, being like I said in the introduction, I love playing like mid-range controlish decks, and I play against these decks a lot. It is tough because as soon as you're on like six. You start to feel the sweat. You start to sweat. And when you're on three, it's like you're already dead. And that's exactly what happened here in game number two. So we've got a 1-1. One, one, and I'm quite happy because that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Jasper on the play. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, taking a mulligan here. Okay, so starting with the card less. Doesn't have to be bad when you play against an opponent with vices. I wonder if Mickey kept them in, by the way. Anyway, we see... Uh, a scrub land here, factory by Mickey, and a pass. So turn two here. And I guess this is good news for Jasper that there's no pressure. There's a another swamp and a pass. Let's see what Mickey can do here. He kept his hand right, so I assume there's some other lands in there. And then the question is, is he going to also animate the factory, be aggressive? He's been aggressive this whole match, which fits his deck. And he is. Look at him go. <laughs> I kind of love this. It's like fearless, you know, like whatever. There's disenchant. You're like, fine. If you don't have it, it's two damage. And that damage may count later on in the game. So I'm liking this style. Anyway, there's the uh, underground C. Soul Ring tapping four. We're going to see Suchi. Nope or not. There's an hypnotic specter. But I mean, that's even uh, maybe more problematic. I am expecting a chain or a bolt here. Remember, Mickey's playing with a play set of each. Let's see what he can do. There's another factory. And, oh, there's a Winter Orb. I believe it came in from the sideboard. That's an interesting inclusion here. So that Winter Orb could be quite problematic. There's a Black Lotus. Okay, <laughs> what else is he going to do here? Wow, what is he going to do with that Lotus? Is he going to crack it and just play out like a load of creatures here? I'm still somewhere expecting... Nope, it looks like he's passing a turn. I wouldn't say I'm somewhere expecting still to see like a bolt. So now Jasper has to make a choice, right? He can only untap one land because of the Winter Orb. Luckily for him, though, he still has the Soul Ring. So it's not too bad. And Mickey here going to lose a card. So five cards, going to lose that one. That's a Plains. That's not too bad, I guess. And I mean, for Jasper here, if he would have had like a land drop and then go in Suchi, that would be quite good for him. But look at that passing the turn, so missing his land drop. It's going to be interesting to see what Mickey can do. I mean, you can take one hit from, from the Hypnotic Spectre, but you don't want that to happen again. There's a bad lance. So Badlands is uh, black and red. So he's really in the tank here, meaning he's got options. Has that Black Lotus, of course. So in total, he's got five mana to work with. Really in the tank. I think my first point of business would be to take care of the Hypnotic, but maybe he doesn't have the tools to do so. Looks like he's going to crack the Lotus. Tap the Bad Lance. Maybe he now has a Mind Twist. He could twist Jasper back. Okay, there's a Lion, so I guess he cracked it for white. Oh, and a Wheel of Fortune. Wow. And that's actually quite good. Look at that. Jasper losing an Ancestral Recall and a Suchi and a Swords. He is going to use the Swords, though, in response on the Lion. But yeah, this is this is quite good for, for Mickey. What I like about Mickey's position, because it is always a risk to do this, is that he still has one land untapped to potentially cast a Vice. And we also see that uh, Jasper... You know, has to deal with the Winter Orb as well. He can only untap one land next turn. Does have, of course, the Soul Ring. That's a big help for him. I don't believe he's got any more mana floating, if I'm not mistaken. If he would sack the Black Lotus for three white. 
because he used one white for the lines and then two white and one red from the Badlands to cast the uh, Wheel of Fortune. And again, he's in the tank here. Go. Passing the turn. Oh, that is not great. That is not great for Mickey. There we see the untap going for that blue source. Does that mean that Jasper has a time walk, perhaps? That would be pretty disastrous for Mickey here. There's a Mox Sapphire. And we see Mickey already uh, putting the lands down. There's the attack. So he's going to drop to 18, but more importantly, he's going to lose a card. Going to lose a Suchi. And I mean, those Moxen and Soul Rings are so good against Winter Orb. Going to tap four. Are we going to see a Suchi here on the side of Jasper? An Icy Manipulator. Ooh, that is quite good against that Winter Orb. Oh, man. That is super annoying for Mickey here. And I wonder if you're Jasper, what you're going to do. Are you going to tap down a land nice. in the upkeep nice. of Mickey? Or are you going to keep your Icy Manipulator to tap down the switch, uh, tap down the Winter Orb at the end step of Mickey, you know, so that you can untap all your lands? So there are some options here for Jasper, but I mean, this Icy gives him a lot of power. This is really a key card here at this point in the match. And of course, Jasper also taking his time here. He's got a, a grip full of cards. But only that one untapped Mox Sapphire. And I think you want to keep that to use your Icy. So he's going to pass the turn here. To Mickey. Mickey untapping the Plateau. And I think the reasoning to do it in his own main is that then... Um, Jasper is guaranteed that Mickey doesn't have enough lands to, for example, play land Disenchant. Perhaps that's his reasoning. I mean, this is this is so far not looking looking good for Mickey, the way this Wheel of Fortune is turning out. He at least needs like a bolt for the hippie, you know that 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 could help him a little. Preferably, you would want a land drop as well. Okay, there's the land at step one. Then you can choose, do I want to disenchant the Icy? Or do I want to maybe, you know, take care of the Hypnotic Spectre first? I guess you want to take care of the Hypnotic Spectre first because you don't want to lose more cards. Now you don't untap, right? yeah. okay, so, uh... And we see him here asking, like, how many artifact mana do you have? Like, the problem here is really, ooh, look at that passing the turn. The problem here for Mickey really is that that Winter Orb is now hurting him. Maybe more than it's hurting Jasper because Jasper has the Soul Ring and the Mox Sapphire. There's the attack for two. Okay, here we're probably going to see the Bolt. There's the Bolt. Hippie is gone. There's another land here. He's got five mana to work with. I wonder if we're going to see a Sengir. Another Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, man. There's the tap down. And passing the turn, they're untapping the plateau. Drawing for turn. I mean, I think the second hippie is really tough here for Mickey. Finally dealt with the hippie that was on the board. Now there's the second one. I also feel that that winter orb is now really hurting Mickey more than it is hurting uh, Jasper. There we see a city of brass talking about pain. He's going to drop to 17. I mean, he's still really high up in life. You know, that's not the problem. Okay, there's a soul ring. That's good. That's something to work with. Tapping three. Oh, a fireball. I mean, that works. Those poor hypnotic specters, you know. One got hit by lightning. The other one had a fireball on top of his head. It's a bad day at the office for the hypnotic specters. I think in general, when you're in a Hypnotic Spectre, it's usually a bad day at the office, right? People kill those creatures on site all the time. There's a Mishra's Factory. You know, and now again, he's got like five mana to work with, right? So, but there's a pass. Okay, there's some air here for Mickey. And look at that. He's going to tap down the, uh, the Sol Ring in the upkeep, I assume. 
of Mickey. So untap, upkeep, tap soaring, then draw a card for turn. Does mean that if you have a disenchant, right, you could tap your uh, your plateau, use the mana from the soaring to play the disenchant. Could have been an option, but then of course you do need the disenchant in hand. There's the pass. So just the pass here. And I believe, how many cards in hand for me? There are two. We cannot see the uh, amount of cards in hand for his opponent. Jasper here, it's his turn. He's got so much land to work with. Look at him go. You're animating the factory and attacking here. Going to put Mickey on 15. Jasper's still on 20, by the way. Hasn't taken any damage, I believe. Which is quite an accomplishment when you're playing against such an aggressive deck. What is he going to do? Really in the tank here. Yep, just passing the turn. And I wonder if Jasper's going to tap the Soaring again. He's not, so... There, I think Jasper is planning on tapping down the Winter Orb. That's kind of what he's signaling to me. And then you've got to wonder, okay, what does he want to do with all that mana? That's kind of scary. But of course, first it's up to Mickey to, to try to figure out a line here. Going to tap the Soul Ring. Okay, there's a Vice. Not doing much, I think, on this board. So one colorless still floating. Could choose to animate and swing in here. It's exactly what he does. Going in with the 2-2. Still playing aggressively. Oh, he's going to tap it down. And is there a pass? And step disenchant. Wow, there was also the disenchant. Ooh, and this could be problematic here. Oh, there's a disenchant in response to the disenchant. Taking care of the IC. I think, you know, maybe Jasper is also helping Mickey here. But of course, we don't know the cards in Jasper's hand. He's going to tap two. Are we going to see a sinkhole? There's a sinkhole on the factory. Could also swing in with his own factory, of course. Uh, Mickey being completely tapped out. Exactly going to swing in for two. Mickey dropping to 13. Tapping two lands. Ooh, there's a time walk. Yeah, that's so good right now. You can fully untap again. There's a strip mines. You can take care of another land if you want to. Maybe Jasper wants to wait for more factories to kill with the strip mine. It's gonna animate, swing in. And I mean, now it's going quite fast for Mickey. He's already on 11. But that's it. Okay, this is good news. No bigger creature threat being played out by Jasper, so good news for Mickey. I mean, he could have been in a much uh, worse position. I wonder what those three cards are. Oh, also just passing the turn. So again, both players kind of top decking. There's the attack. Now we're going to see a bolt here taking care of the factory. There's another factory, though. There's a pass, so next turn he's going to try to... Swing in again with the factory. Gonna tap four. What are we gonna see for four? There's a Suchi. There's a pass. Divine Offering. Yeah, Divine Offering is really good here against uh, such an aggressive burn deck. Jasper going up to 24. It's looking really good for him. Can swing in with the factory. Put Mickey on nine. Gonna do something else first, it seems. There's a Mind Twist. Again, a Mind Twist. So he has now twisted Mickey's hand every game. <laughs> I mean, Jasper, you owe him a beer. That's the least you can you can get him after this match. And okay, there is an A talk. Okay, so that's 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 useful. So Mickey on nine, Jasper on twenty-four. I mean that twenty-four, that is huge. Oh, there's the abyss coming in from the sideboard. So that's why we didn't see a single Sengir Vampire that game three. Look at that, now losing 
Here's a talk. Yeah, this abyss is really bad. Okay, at least finding a Suchi. That's probably one of the better draws for him. Oh, and this is interesting. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's, there's the one minute call, which means that these players just have one minute to finish their match. So that's some serious pressure for Jasper. And you see him here attacking with both creatures. Maybe not the best exchange, but understandable considering the time. Dealing four more points of damage to Mickey here who's on five. So what's gonna happen after this minute, the final five turns will start. If then the match hasn't been decided, it will be a draw. And of course, in this situation, that will be very good for Mickey and very bad here for Jasper. So I'm really curious to see how this will end up. Just a pass here for Mickey playing the Mox Ruby. And we still see both of the Suchis kind of in a standoff. Look at that, just a pass from Jasper. Wow, what a battle this is. Round number one of the Edge Man. Tapping five, Sengir. I'm a little bit surprised by this uh, play because he's got the Abyss still. Perhaps he's missing it that the Abyss is going to die to the, uh, sorry, the, the Sengir Vampire is going to die to the Abyss. There's the pass, untap, upkeep. Now it's gonna die exactly, Mickey pointing it out. I think Jasper didn't see it. It's always easy, of course, here from the commentary position to see these things, but when you're in the heat of the moment and you're looking for a way out, in this case, a way to win, you can feel that pressure. There's the attack by Mickey. Are we gonna see an exchange by the Suchis? I guess you're just gonna take the damage if your Jasper is gonna go to 20, but I wonder what Mickey is gonna play. Maybe another Suchi. Oh, there's another one. So is Mickey here taking over? Now remember, these players only have, it's gotta be now like half a minute to finish their match, then the final five turns start. We see Jasper here also casting a Suchi. It is a Suchi fest. So these 4-4s four really good when you're playing against the Abyss. And Mickey here trying to think, just passing the turn. Perhaps he's like, okay, I'm fine with the standstill. Gonna let this end up into a draw. Ooh, this is an Underworld Dreams, but I don't think that there are enough turns here because they've already started, I believe, their final five turns. It's kind of hard for me to follow, but I think there are only three more turns for Mickey. That means he, he can just make it, just about make it. He's on four at the moment, so three more turns would, would mean he would end on one. And Mickey here, understandably in the tank, trying to figure out what to do. Cannot afford to take a single point of damage. Oh, look at this, attacking with both. What's going on? And I believe there is the dice with the five final turns, starting with Mickey. And uh, I guess the players here discussing also with the judge how this all works. Now with Tournament Magic, you usually have 50 minutes to finish your match. And then if it's not decided yet, you get five more turns to finish the game. Now there's the attack by Mickey. So this is very spectacular here. This double attack. He is gonna block one Suchi to make the trade, gonna take four, gonna drop to 16. And I mean, I'm assuming Mickey has an answer here for the Suchi or else it's game over for him. Gonna do a double tap here. What, what are we gonna see? Oh, lightning bolt, chain lightning, taking care of the Suchi. Yeah, this makes sense. And that means that now he has that Suchi open to start attacking a few more turns, but not enough, I guess, to put him on zero, but he's gonna cast something else. An Armageddon, ho oh, ho, very spectacular. Armageddon wiping the board. And I think this Armageddon really shows that he is going to go for that draw. And of course that makes sense. He's been uh, with his back against the wall this uh, entire uh, game, game three, but he's been doing quite well. And this Armageddon may seal the deal for him. Gonna play a land past the turn. So here we see Jasper, I believe, starting on turn number four. Playing a force field. Oh, that is kind of cool, this force field. Force field means any damage dealt to one target, you can reduce it to just one damage. So if he attacks with the Suchi, he can pay one. We're gonna see it in action now, right? Gonna use the City of Brass, take a damage from the city, and then only take one damage from the Suchi because of the force field. And this is turn three, and this is turn two now for Jasper. If I'm following it correctly, I mean, this has to be a draw, right? We see Jasper on 14. 
Mickey's still on three. What can he do really? There's the pass. So Mickey will drop to two, but I believe this is his final turn. Still has to take a damage from the Dreams. Exactly, Jasper pointing it out. So he is going to go to two. There's the attack. So of course, going to use the force field again. So just take one damage. Going to go to 13. Without the force field, Mickey would have got, gotten close, but not close enough, I guess. And I think this is the last turn by Jasper. Yep, that's it. It's a draw between these two players and maybe they uh, they both deserve to, to make it into a draw here. It's so interesting to see these two decks where you kind of feel, especially in that game three, that Jasper, you know, has the stronger deck. But the problem is, you know, Mickey is piloting his deck very, very well, knows exactly what to do. And I mean, his deck just hurts so much. Everything he does means the opponent is hurting and losing life. And it's really tough against these decks. So this is a draw, but what a great start of the Atchman Championships. And if you want to see more of the Atchman, make sure to uh, come, come back again next week because then we have more action from the Atchman. I will have a new, uh, new episode up every single week all the way up to the finals. And before you go, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And of course, you can also support the show by three simple actions. You can like, share and comment uh, on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can support the channel. And one of the cool things is if you become a patron of the show, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Zing!